It's been a couple years guys, but I am finally back in the Pegasus. And today's video, we are taking the Pegasus 37 out on its first run. If you're new here, my name's Matt, welcome to the channel. On this channel, we talk about all things running. If that is your bag, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, be appreciated if you give it a thumbs up and hit that bell icon so you're notified every time I drop a new video. With that said, let's take the Pegasus 37 out for its first run. Oh, I'm only three miles in. The air is thick. It's like running in soup and not a nice soup, like miso. It's more like, more like running in chowder. It's super hazy too. I don't know if you can see the sun coming up. A great first run, great first run in the Nike Zoom Pegasus 37. 37th iteration of this shoe. And yeah, pretty good, pretty happy. Okay, today's run. Today's run was brutal, absolutely brutal. Not the distance, pace was pretty easy, but the weather was shocking. So heavy, so heavy. It was 79 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 26.11 Celsius, 91% humidity. A real soaker, that's for sure. All right, today's run was 13.25 mile, which is 21.32 kilometers at an average pace of 804 a mile, which is 501 a kilometer. I did include some strides or some pickups, not really as fast as strides, but I did just want to test these shoes because it was an easy run and I wanted to just get up on the balls of my feet a little more and start moving and seeing how they react. But we'll talk about all that once I get inside. So let me go get cleaned up and I'm gonna tell you about these shoes. Before I go inside, I just say that these look, these look pretty nice. I'm pretty happy with how these look. I'm loving the pink. There is a pink underlay. I don't know if you can see it underneath this, uh, this gray mesh. Great colorway, covered in grass. Still looking pretty good. All right, inside. Well guys, that was a great run, a great run. And listen, new shoe day is always a great day and I'm always excited for the first run. I was more excited for this shoe because of our history together. The Pegasus and I, we go back a long way. This was the first shoe that I really fell in love with and I ran with it for years. All of my PRs, well, maybe not all my PRs, but the marathon and the half marathon have been set in the Pegasus. Now I set my marathon and half marathon PRs way back in 2009 when I was a little bit faster than I am now and a little bit younger and I only ran in the Pegasus back then. Since then, I kind of moved on to the Zoom Fly, and then I skipped straight to the Zoom Fly 3. Now I'm back. It's like a breath of fresh air. First, let's talk about some stats for this shoe. It's a 10 millimeter drop with 28 in the heel, 18 in the forefoot. Men's size nine comes in at 9.6 ounces, but my size 13 comes in at 12.8. Although you can see there on the scale, it does say 12.8, but they're still a little damp from this morning's run. So let's take off a 10th of an ounce for the water weight. Sizing, I have run in more Nikes over the years than I have any other shoe. So size 13 is my size and it fits pretty true to size. You remember last week when I ran in the Reeboks, 
those were a little smaller. They fit, or they fit a little bigger, so I had to go a little smaller, and I was running in a size 12 for those. Pegasus, true to size. Okay, let's just talk about what has changed from last year with the Pegasus 36, and now we're on to the Pegasus 37, because that's what's getting all the hype. There have been some changes. Now, Nike has switched the midsole foam to React. What does that mean? React is just a little better foam. It's, it's a little more bouncy. It's a little more responsive. It's better than what they were using before. Also, the zoom unit, that little airbag that they put along the whole sole, well, it is no longer in the whole sole. It is just in the forefoot. And we can see here on this graphic, it's just in the forefoot. Now they say they've doubled the size. They've doubled the thickness for comfort. That can only be a good thing, right? Now, even though they doubled the size, it wasn't noticeable. Some people say they can feel the cush of the zoom unit in their forefoot. I didn't notice any of that. This year, Nike has made the male version of the shoe a little different from the female version of the shoe. And it's to do with the zoom unit. The male version is inflated to 20 PSI, while the female's version of the shoe is only inflated to 15 PSI. Now, I was looking around. I couldn't find an exact reason why they would do this. I noticed some other YouTubers have said that it's because females like a more cushioned ride. I don't think that's true at all. I don't think males and females are different in that regard. If I had to think of a reason off the top of my head, it's because, generally speaking, females weigh less than males, so the PSI doesn't have to be as high in order to get the same level of cushioning. Now, the design this year has been inspired by the Zoomfly and the Vaporfly. While it's certainly not as fast as the Vaporfly, it is a direct competitor now for the Zoomfly. And I still have a pair of Zoomflies on rotation, and they feel pretty similar as far as responsiveness goes. This is a daily trainer through and through. It's soft and cushioned enough for your recovery and easy runs, and it's responsive enough for the times when you want to pick up the pace. I have raced marathons in this shoe. Dare I say that if you could only choose one shoe, this would be it. Now, what else do we want from a daily trainer? Well, aside from comfort, we want resilience. We want durability. And Nike has done that with the outsole. They're using a blown rubber in the forefoot, which they say gives multi-surface traction. You saw how soaked I was on today's run. Well, the mesh in the upper, I mean, listen, it's gonna be different for me. It's gonna be different for me because I usually run in hot and humid conditions. And while, the mesh upper does give ventilation. It doesn't matter how much ventilation it gives me when it's 80 degrees and 100% humidity, I am gonna soak through these shoes. So there's only so much ventilation that it can give me. In a cooler climate, I think the ventilation would be just perfect. What do you guys think of this colorway? Out of all the colors, this one suited me down to the ground. And I have to look to remember what it's called, but it is the Obsidian Mist Black Lotus Pink Hydrogen blue. Kofuzi loves his black shoes. Any shoes with pink and hydrogen blue, that's for me. So on this morning's run, as far as pace goes, I was taking it pretty easy with the warmth and the humidity. My heart rate was a little higher than I like it for an easy run, but the pace was generally where I keep it for an easy run. And then I did a couple of pickups. I did eight 30 second pickups just to test the shoe out and see what it's like going a bit faster. The ride was super comfortable. It was easy to just sit back and forget about the shoe go in at a nice easy pace. But when it was time to pick up the pace, I really got onto my forefoot and it was cushioned and reactive, almost like the, the best of both worlds, right? Cushioned, reactive. All right, let's just address a few of the issues that I've heard from other wearers of this shoe. I've heard that the toe box, there isn't enough room in the toe box. For me, the toe box fit just perfect. Now they say it's a little tight, more like a racing fit. I didn't really find that. I've run in other shoes that are a lot tighter through the through the toe box, which I would call a more racing fit. This was comfortable. This was definitely daily trainer. Heel slip. Lots of runners have complained about the heel slip in this shoe. I didn't experience any of it. I just laced these shoes normally. I didn't do the runner's knot or the where I locked down the heel. The heel slip isn't gonna happen for everyone. Occasionally, when shoes are a little tight, I start getting a little rubbing out here by my little toe. That's where I really feel it if it's tight. I didn't have it in this shoe. Comparison would be the Hoka Rincon. That shoe is really tight for me in the toe box. And I notice whenever I put it on, I can feel my little toe rubbing against the outside. This didn't happen in these Peg 37. Nike's really onto something with their tongue. It's still the same thin tongue that fits your foot perfectly. And it's a gusseted tongue, which I feel silly even mentioning. It seems like every running shoe should have a gusseted tongue. And whenever I do a review of a shoe that doesn't, I'm probably gonna bring it up, but I'm just mentioning it because you should probably know. The gusseted tongue generally makes shoes fit better. 
pump doesn't slide to the side. Who wants to deal with that? Remember last week when I reviewed the Floatrite Energy and I was complaining about the laces being too short? Laces on here are the perfect length. I had no issues whatsoever. I tied them once at the beginning of my run. Didn't have to think about it after that. All right, let's talk about price. At $120, this shoe is worth its weight in gold. That is great value. Great value for a shoe that will last at least 400 miles. I bet you could take it considerably further. Be skeptical. Be skeptical of an initial review because the first time you go out for a run in a pair of shoes, I don't think there is any better feeling than that. The shoes always feel so good. So this was the first 13 miles or 21 kilometers I did in this shoe. I will check in again with you after 100 miles. That won't be long because this was a very comfortable shoe to run in. So. I'm gonna reach for it a little more often than some of the other shoes on my rotation. If you like this video, if you've got any value, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not already. Thank you for staying all the way to the end of the video. Be kind, be happy, and run well, and I'll see you next time.